it's the from Lynn Lynn from Lynn to Lynn 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 the Pilates, the Pilates Mastermind, and Strong Bones. You know, it's been it's been a year and a half, almost two years now, that has felt like millennia. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where time has gone. We're in just like this odd fugue state right now. Um, and then we keep hearing, you know, first first it was it was like a science fiction movie, seriously, of you know masks and weirdness. And I remember standing online at the Javits Center to get my first shot. And it was packed with like thousands of people and they were moving us in these lines and they had all of, they had this like robot voice on the intercom going, please stay six feet apart. Please make sure you have all your paperwork. And I was like, I feel like I'm in Logan's run. And we all know how that ended. Not well. <laughs> and it's just been very strange and very disturbing. And I think, you know, for me, um, for other Pilates professionals, other professionals in the world, finding joy has been at the bottom of our list. It really, really has. And I know that there's a lot of you out there who know this and who are living this and who really agree with me on this. And I am very interested in all of us finding some joy, okay, because we really need it. And even though as Pilates professionals or yoga or fitness professionals, we will go ahead and do our own personal practice and we'll say, oh, that did it. Here's my stress relief. I did my 100 for the day. Um, that really doesn't do it. It really doesn't do it because these are the things we do all the time every day. And sometimes I think we just need something a little new. So everybody, today I am here with my friend Renee Hughes. And Renee is another advancer. So you guys hear me talking about the Advanced Women's Expert Network all the time. And surely you all see the quality of the people I connect with in the event. So, um, so welcome, Renee. Renee is the founder of the Aroma Specialist. She runs some programs, including Holistic Champions, International School of Aromatherapy, and the Mood Makeover Method, an emotional detox program. And I think we're going to be we're going to be diving a little bit into that one today, Renee. <laughs> Renee is a certified professional aromatherapist and holistic coach mentor. Her specialty is psychoaromatherapy and teaching profitable practice building techniques with live launches. Holistic professionals come to Renee for either emotional relief because <laughs> the people who teach it and do it often need it the most, or, and probably end or, I would think, to scale their holistic practice <laughs> with heart-oriented business building techniques. Because frankly, it's running a business a lot of times that can just be soul sucking. Yeah, it really can. Um, because we help others and don't always fill our own cups. That's it. So, welcome, Renee. Thank you. Glad to be here. I'm hearing that we're echoing a little bit. <laughs> oh, you so know, you between the phone and the computer and the it's device, we may have a little echo. echo. And it's okay. Mary, that's right. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really You're appreciate welcome. it. So tell us a little bit about your work, about you, where you are. And the whole thing. I love this subject. I I am I live primarily in Jamaica, actually, the island. <laughs> and I used to live in Kirsten Caco, so I'm I'm familiar with the island life. Yes, love the island life and a rural area in Jamaica. So it's not gonna be the, the resort spot that you that you think of. We love it, it's beautiful. Um, but my husband and I are from the States and so we're here a lot as well. We're all over the place in Maryland and Georgia and all over. And uh, my work, as you as you mentioned, I my specialty is psychoaromatherapy. And the reason so what is that, that? so it, it really is just the effect that aromatherapy essential oils have on the brain, which is partially what we're going to be talking about today. It is the whole conversation around the limbic system and the amygdala and 
what essential oils does for that. So when I went to school, uh, initially for it to become a natural health consultant, I was certified in that. And then I wanted to specialize. So I wanted to learn about aromatherapy and then I wanted to dig deeper into that and specialize particularly on the brain and our emotions. And there was such a connection between aromatherapy and our where our olfactory bulb sits and where our amygdala sits and all of your audience knows about that. So we know how important it is to connect to that and to nourish that system so that we can rewire that internal messaging. So I really dug into that. And then I practiced and tested a lot of different things and came up with a method, which we call the Mood Makeover Method, that really helps to con completely rewire that system for the long haul. And so this is what my clients and I use. I developed it at a time that I needed it most. So just as you mentioned, we as coaches, especially the ones who are caring for other people so much in their health and wellness and fitness, um, we need it because we're often really empathetic. So we're carrying a lot of pain and a lot of weight and a lot of emotion from person to person. And we need a way to be able to release and to nourish. And so I came up with the Makeover Method started teaching it. Uh, over 400 people have been through my workshops um, wow, and have wow. learned the method. Yeah. Yeah. So we're really excited about the uh, the effect that it's had on our audience. So when you're so looking you're at the aromatherapy, the aromatherapy work that you're, work that you're doing, are you doing working primarily, primarily with essential oils? oils? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we use um, essential oils, um, breath work, of course, all of you are familiar with um, breath work. And so we do the abdominal work, um, but we do it along with the abdominal breathing, but we do it along with inhaling the oils so that the, the, the system, the lymphic system is activated, our vagus nerve, all of that, all of these things are activated to help us to move nicely between parasympathetic and sympathetic system. It really helps us to rewire and change. So we do that inhaling. We also do some tapping. So those of you who are familiar with EFT, we do that along with the, the oils, the oils being on our hands and also the oils having been inhaled. So we do that along with it too. Um, and then some mindset principles and capacity things that we talk about kind of all together comes with the Mood Makeover Method. Wow, that sounds, actually it sounds like a great program. Yeah. Um, now talk to me for a second about exactly how it is that the, aromas coming into the nose can actually help calm down our nervous system yeah and help our brains kind of get to a better a better state yeah so that's what we're that's what we're wanting to do is to kind of rewire what's happening in in the brain like you said this has been a, a tough uh, almost two years and so when when the the body experiences trauma we know that it can imprint on the brain and even our dna so with the way that if we look at a picture of the limbic system, the olfactory bulb, which is just beyond the nose there, um, that aroma goes up and it's the amygdala and the entire limbic system is right there receiving the plant chemistry that comes in with those oils. And so it's not, it's a kind, a kind of a combination because it is the pleasant aroma. We like to use aromas that are um, particularly pleasing to the audience. There's a whole thing out there that people talk about online. Oh, if you don't like the smell of, a, of an oil, it means that you need it. And that that's not scientifically proven or nor do we believe it to be true. We yeah, like I've to never do, quite understood that. Like yeah, I get that in exercise, like we say that in Pilates all the time, right. that usually when you're exercising, what you hate doing because it's hard, it's hard. Right. It's precisely hard because it's, because what, you it's what you need. Right. But I've never I've understood never that, that in the realm of of more kind of feel good. Right. Um, it's even when I used to work at Parrot Key, you know, the uh, spot of the private island resort and spa and church and so And even when we did like Abhyanga treatments and different Ayurvedic treatments, they would always ask you what oil you wanted. Mm -hmm. What you wanted, right. So that nobody was stuck 
laying there for an hour and a half to two hours smelling Just something me. they didn't like. Exactly. <laughs> good for them or not. Right. Because, yes, the chemistry is still going to be good for you. And that's why I say it's two different things. The, the pleasing aroma, sometimes that aroma, aroma evokes memory. And you can connect back to a good memory or a not so good memory. So for our clients, we like to encourage them to have their clients, because we teach other practitioners, have them inhale it and see how they feel just inhaling a little bit of the blend. And then if it's something that feels good to them, it feels pleasing to them, then you move ahead with it. So the part one is just the pleasing aroma. What it reminds you of, what it makes you feel, the safety you feel, the good connection that you have with that aroma. And then the second part is the actual plant chemistry that's moving through your system that is attaching to those receptors that are nourishing uh, your limbic system, which speaks to all the rest of your body. And so when we're talking about rewiring um, our system, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the limbic system because it is responsible for how we perceive emotion, um, how we learn, how we show up. And so it's really, uh, this is something I talk about a lot. It's important for professionals, especially like us, because of what we do. And if you're having to perform and you're having to do something as physical as Pilates is and, and whatever other coaching you, you do with that, you need to be able to have some control over those thoughts and feelings. And sometimes we feel out of control because there's so much we can't control in the world and things that are happening, right? But just getting in that space where you can begin to nourish your brain and you can change even some memories along how you feel about a thing, how you per perceive a thing by inhaling the oils and releasing through the tapping and the breath work and kind of putting it all together. And it's kind of like you mentioned earlier, it's not so much about doing just one thing because as aromatherapists, of course, we've got our oils and we're breathing and things like that, but it's doing all of it and doing it consistently, even when we don't feel like it. So it's the same thing that you mentioned to your clients, I'm sure. It's like we need to be doing this consistently in order to see the work because we're being we're being bombarded with news cycles that are not usually good news. We have to go and look for good news. We're bombarded with that. We're seeing social injustice and this person hates this person and this person hates this person and the COVID will not go away. There's constantly a different strain and this is happening and that's happening. And all of this is bombarding our systems. So we need uh, uh, anti-attack. We need to, to work at it at another level to calm down those systems. And just like we're bombarded every day with some of the negative things, we need to be doing something positive and therapeutic that works at those levels. And aromatherapy is just fantastic at it. The potency of the oils and how it can really help to shift that nervous system from being stuck in sympathetic mode, which many of us are, especially as entrepreneurs, because we're driven people, um, to go into that parasympathetic so that we can rest and we can digest. So it really, really works underlying and kind of in the background? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So even though people will usually feel a benefit within seconds, you can feel it, whether that be a reduction in pain, physical pain, emotional pain, you can feel it pretty quickly. Um, but it's the, the repetition of it that really helps us with the rewiring. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, just as an aside, whenever I turn my volume off on my device and start an IG Live, it automatically turns my device volume up like that tiny little bit. Yeah. And then it doesn't allow me to turn it back down. It's yeah. Awesome. Not, that, really. not really. <laughs> Technology, my we friend. Love IG. You too. Right? Right? It's giving us a lot. That was out. But <laughs> now, I have a little have story a little about aromatherapy that I want to tell you. I, want to tell you. Okay. I, I used, used to, to work, work in a studio. In and, and my last, my last year, year there, there they, they started, started a signature, a signature scent, scent, right? right. An essential oil blend, blend. Mm -hmm. that ran 
you know, from the yeah, moment we opened to the moment we closed. Mm -hmm. and, and it used, it to, make used to make my throat close. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 I'm yes, telling I'm you telling folks, you if you're watching, watching, I was the I one who came in every morning and unplugged it. That was me. <laughs> That's so young. Confession time. <laughs> because I couldn't. Because I was teaching and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So for folks who are a little more scent sensitive or sinus sensitive, um, do you have advice for working with essential oils? Because, you know, when I worked, obviously, at at Como Shambhala Parrot Tea, you know, Como Shambhala has its own oil blend. They are extraordinarily high quality essential oils. And I never had an issue. It was burning in the spa all day in my studio, in the yoga pavilion, in the gym, um, never had a problem. But then suddenly a different blend, a different place, a different thing, and I was not doing well. Yeah, that can happen. and. There's a, there's a couple of things to that. Number one, it really could be the quality of the oil because not every essential oil is actually uh, a genuine therapeutic organic oil. It can have a lot of toxins in it that will make people really sick. And this is something that I preach about so much. Please, you want to look for an essential oil that is organic, that's high quality, that you know some history about where it came from. You want to know something about, uh, hopefully you can get like their GCMS reports, especially if you're using it as a professional. The oils that you're, that you're, that you're using, um, you want to be able to look at the reports to see what's in it. Because so this is not necessarily the time to just be going to Whole Foods or getting the cheapest thing on Amazon. No, please don't. There's a, there was a news story recently all over in Georgia. I don't know if it was everywhere where people were getting really sick with a toxic essential oil. But the way they were reporting is like, oh, essential oils can make you sick. Well, it was really that this was not an essential oil, it's better harm homes and gardens. It's like really, so I'm always, you know, telling people, please be careful of where you source your oils. It is, there, there's this thing out there where people still think, oh, it's natural, so it's gonna be fine, but it can really be toxic and really make you incredibly sick. So that's number one. It could have been junk. It really could have been. Number two is, even if it is a organic, perfectly uh, 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 sourced oil, if you're allergic to something, you're allergic to it. So right. if you are allergic to lime or lemon or grapefruit and you use the oil, you could still have an allergic reaction. It doesn't mean that the oil is no good. It means that you're allergic to that thing. So it could have been either one of those things. It could be a third thing. It could have been the combination. I've had some clients who were fine with an oil, using them uh, individually, but the combination, it is chemistry. It's plant chemistry. It's something that we're all, everything is chemistry. And so sometimes people are like, oh, get the chemicals out of your life. You use essential oils, but they are also chemistry. We're chemistry. Humans are chemistry. So everything is. And when you put different things together, it could come make a combination that's not good for you. So I really encourage people to definitely listen to their body. Don't force something because it's like, oh, no, this is all natural and it's a good quality. And my friend said it was going to work for me. So I'm going to can't breathe, but I'm going to keep using it. You know, please don't do that. <laughs> please don't do that. Listen to your body will tell you when something is not good for it. Even if you don't know exactly why you want to listen to your body and just completely. I've had people just dump an entire blend like you, you, they're using a diffuser something happens, I'm like, get rid of it, clean out your diffuser, let's start again, there's something in there that your body doesn't like. So it, it could be either either of those things, and the only way to really know is, is trial and error and kind of testing it out. Right, but this is also where we're looking at, that doesn't mean you need it. No, that doesn't mean you need it. <laughs> that doesn't mean you need it, right? So, you know, it's, it's sounding more and more to me like really the best way to approach essential oils is by working with a trained professional who really understands what they are, how they work, um, and what to do if there's any kind of, of adverse reaction or, or anything um, that, that goes on. I also find it interesting that you, that of all the techniques, and I'm a huge fan of EFT, by the way, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you on that, yes. um, that you chose EFT 
um, along with the breathing techniques um, and the aromatherapy. Um, so I wanted to just ask you a little bit about that. Um, about why that particular combination for you is so powerful for you and your clients. Yeah. You know, I learned it after I had become an aromatherapist and I was looking for things. I was putting, I knew that I wanted to create something, a, a process. And I used to call it, I want to release and nourish program. I wanted something that would help me to release emotionally, but then also nourish me. And we actually used to call it release and nourish. And right at that time, I was working with a coach and Jason Winters, he's an amazing coach, and he taught me EFT. And boy, it was helping me so much with the releasing and the, the, the conversations we would have around these things that you never really want to say out loud, that you don't want to be true, that you don't want to deal with, but you're carrying it around like a brick in your heart, you know, and releasing it just changes everything it changes it really is a big part of that rewiring that internal messaging system the things you're saying to yourself all the time that you're thinking that you're feeling so when i learned that i thought i have to put these things together because they're so powerful and so when i did that i i used eft for a while on its own and then i started using it with the oils and everything changed where I was able to shift. I had some, something really traumatic happen and that was traumatic for me. <laughs> just, you know, it was just how I processed it. And because I was just heartbroken and I just needed, I couldn't, un, I couldn't repair from it. It was something that I, you know, in other cases, you may be able to just bounce right back from. I couldn't bounce back. And that had never happened to me before. And I realized that I needed to reset some things. I needed to reset internally. And combining the oils with the breath work, with the tapping, is what did it. And long term, so that I wasn't going back and forth so much with it. And about how long a day does your practice take? 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 we, minutes. we recommend 15 minutes a day to to keep it going uh tra full transparency a lot of times that ends up being five minutes because we're also busy so me and my clients will skirt around that 15 minutes ideally and we tested this a lot of different ways i started it with like a 30-day i actually started with a 100-day plan and a 30-day plan and what we know now is the sweet spot what works for everybody who's come through is we start with a seven day what we call a seven day emotional detox and in that seven days, we do 15 minutes three times a day for your first seven days. And then after that, you go to 15 minutes a day, ideally. Mm -hmm. But we end up saying you do as long as you can. Because so you're, you're really kind of front loading it. it. Say it again. You're kind of yeah. front loading. We do that yeah. in Reiki also, you know, where at the beginning, it's like you do Reiki for yourself every day. Yes. Every yeah. day now for at least 21 days. Now, I ideally, you know, everyone who does Reiki does it every day mm -hmm. all the time. Um, but again, that doesn't always work. Right. So sometimes I'm lucky if I get on my couch for that seven minutes in the morning and do a quick meditation. And right. Go you feel good. I did it. I did something. But 15, 15 minutes, my friends, do you hear this? I just like I'm wanting everyone to hear this. That yeah. none of the things that are super effective for us in terms of stress relief really take a ridiculous amount of time. They really don't. They just don't. Mm -mm. It's true. And the effect is so worth it. If we can just give ourselves, and some, you know, part of the conversation we need to have with ourselves too is if we consistently find that we're not taking 15 minutes for ourselves, that's a whole other conversation. What's happening that I know I can reset my system. I know I can reset these messengers who are talking to all the other systems of my body, my endocrine system, my cardiovascular system. It's important for my physical, my physiology, as well as my, my mental health. And then we don't do it. Why? You know, what's happening that we can't give ourselves 15 minutes in the day. Right. And I think that that's actually an extremely important question. Mm -hmm for everyone to ask, because if you think that you're going to magically wake up and, and have joy, 
Gotta work not how it, it works. Yeah. It is not how it works. And so, you know, so many of us kind of in this space of working with wellness and healing um, have, you know, come through our own, our own journeys. Mm -hmm. And obviously the, I mean, I, I'm relatively honest with my folks um, about the days that I'm not feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe not putting that public face on on that day or putting a little more muted public face on on that day. But, you know, I want to remind people that everybody online is trying to put on their best face, their most joyful self all the time. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that they're living a joyful life? No. Absolutely not. At all. Not at all. Absolutely not. So and it's I think exhausting. that you know, finding the internal processes and practices that work for us so that we can find it. Because my friends, if you're trying to teach your clients this and you don't have it, there's a big disconnect there. Big disconnect. And the thing is, Linda, is that people can feel it. And they don't always know what it is that they're feeling. But you, I love what you just said, that you just show up with your honesty because that people can resonate with and they can connect with. She's not just not feeling it today. I can get with that. But when you're trying to put it on and you're not, but it's not genuine, people feel disconnected and they don't know why. And it affects you. It affects your business. It affects your relationships. It's just so much um, very releasing and balancing to just be real with it. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, it's, it's also giving ourselves permission to, um, to, to have a bad day every once in a while, to kind of go there, to feel those feelings. I mean, and not yeah. just, just wipe them off and, and say we shouldn't have them because of course we should have them. Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, some of, some of our base, our base feelings, our base fears and things like that yeah. are, are survival mechanisms and they are healthy. Yeah. <laughs> they are healthy for survival. I think the problem is is that when we get into deep stress places we start to feel that is normal mm -hmm. our bodies see. just kind of adjust to that mm -hmm. people are like i ate more so i gained weight during covid and i'm like your body was also stressed out and interested in storing fats during covid yes you know that yeah, that, I mean, that like, kind of and, and that's what happens. That's what our bodies do. I mean, that's our first physical response, right, to stress. Cortisol production, let's store some fat. Yeah. Store it up. <laughs> right? Just we could be starving. We don't right. know. Something's happening. Eat. And, and know that, know that, that that lizard part of your brain every day <laughs> is looking for threats. And all threats are kind of handled in a similar way. We have physical responses to threats, whether we imagine them, whether they are really physically in front of us, mm -hmm. whether they are old threats from years ago. It That's doesn't so true. Matter, right? Yeah, and I, I have this, I love what you said because we, I like to have that conversation about, because we talk a lot about not being stuck in sympathetic mode. The thing is, we were created with this, this central nervous system, all parts of it. So it's not that sympathetic mode, that fight or flight or freeze is a bad thing. We need it. Sometimes you need to fight. So just what you said, sometimes we do need to be in that mode. It's not a bad thing. What's, what's bad is if we stay stuck in either one of those. You know, it's we, we, we were designed to go in and out of it. It's supposed to ebb and flow and not be stuck in either place. Right, because sometimes we do need that adrenaline and cortisol. That's right. That's it. And it's important. You know, I we've all read news stories about women who, you know, put, lift cars up off of their kids. Yes. Heard that, yeah. That's how that happens. Mm hmm Yeah. Their bodies are like, mama. <laughs> the mama comes out. <laughs> Save that child. Do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And you do it. And you do yeah. what you got to do. Yeah. That's it. So, Renee, how can people get in touch with you to find out more about working with you? 
Well, you know what? Probably one of the best places is to go to Instagram, even though it gave us trouble today. <laughs> uh, you, can find me, <laughs> you can find me there at the Aroma Specialist. Uh, we have actually a workshop coming up that we're going to be inviting everyone to, but the link is already there. So if you just go to our profile, you'll see it and you'll learn a whole lot more about what it is that we do and a few of the steps in there too. Great. So everybody, if you're interested in learning more about using essential oils, aromatherapy, EFT, breathing technique to bring yourself more joy and therefore be able to help your clients experience more joy, I highly recommend that you get in touch with Renee. Seriously, she's awesome. She studies, she knows what she's doing. And she can help you. Thank so you. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so I much for much. being thank here. Thank you so much for inviting uh, me. You're welcome. So I'm going to end the Instagram, hang out on Restream for a moment. All right. Let's see.